Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Between Paychecks Kitchen. I'm Oz, Jack and Later still in Lake Jackson because, you know, say social distancing, we're being safe. Uh, this one is something that I tried at a restaurant years ago, and I was just looking for new recipes, and I stumbled across this quick bag of pre-made stuff, so we're going to jump right into that. Uh, I'm going to try it. Let's see if I can screw this one up too. This will be fun. Before we do, be sure to like, share, subscribe to all the youtube stuff. We very much appreciate the likes. It helps us with the algorithm that gets us out there. Please subscribe if you haven't. Ring the little bell. It reminds you when we get these things. We try to do them every Tuesday and Friday, so thank you very much for everybody that's already subscribed. And be sure to check our link for our merch. We got our aprons. We got our fake hands. We got oven mitts. We got flippers and spatulas and spoons. It's all down there and there. Appreciate it. We're a small business. That helps us out a lot. And let's just get into it, man. Enough plugging. Like, I just forget I said anything. No, don't forget everything. Just, let's just do food now. All right, I slowed this down because I blew through it when I recorded it too much. So first things first, you're going to need to get some of these raviolis. They're frozen. Got them at a local store for like a handful of dollars. That's good. Uh, you're going to need some oil to cook them in. Uh, a bit more oil than it's in there. You're going to need some eggs. Uh, usually two to three is what I use. I think I ended up using three. Uh, I got some meat sauce, whatever you want to dress it with. And you're going to need some breadcrumbs or panko or just flour. It depends on what you want to use it for. I'm going to try the Italian style breadcrumbs. So, first things first, you're going to get you a bowl and a fork or a, a whisk if you have one. I mean, I, I use a fork. Uh, go ahead and crack your egg in there. Just keep an eye. If you drop any shell in there, just reach and pull it out. It's not that big a deal. Uh, I had somebody say that they always throw it out when they get an eggshell in it because it makes it go bad. Like, ah, that's not true. So, go ahead, puncture your yolks, and then beat them like they owe you money. Just knock the ever-living crap out of those eggs for... A good while, like, you don't want big, long, stringy bits of egg and egg yolk in there, so just keep beating it as best you can. Uh, apparently a whisk works better, but I like using my fork. So, now you got your egg set, now you get you another bowl and another plate. I'm going to show you how to set up these stations. Your first one puts your, your flour or your breadcrumbs or your panko in, and the next one is going to be, uh, I, I think I used like half of this. So, and the last one's going to be your setup for where you put when you're done. So, make sure these are thawed. You need to set them out the night before, if whatever, or just put them in the fridge, let them thaw. And then cut them in egg. Now, they got a weird shape, so you got to make sure it gets all around that edge of that bulge of that ravioli. And then throw it right into your breading, breadcrumbs, uh, flour, cornmeal, like whatever you're going to fly it in. Uh, make sure it gets a nice big coat on it. And then set it to the side. Now, I try not to stack them on top of each other so they don't group up. And I have just one giant ravioli thing. So put those in a fridge for about 20 minutes or while you're doing the other one. Like, it took me two plates of this thing. So, as you can tell in the background, I have my uh, phone playing. I was listening to Simon Whistler over it today, I found out. Uh, after you do your first coat, you let them sit in the fridge. Go ahead. You're probably going to need to replace just the one egg. Again, just throw it in with the other one. Don't have to mix it separately. Just put it in there. And then again, beat it like it owes you money. And uh, make sure it's nice and run. Now, your uh, breadcrumbs probably be running a little low. Like I, said, I don't use the whole thing because I didn't have to and I didn't want to waste anything at the end of it. So these have been in the fridge for about 20 minutes. So just put them right in there, man. Uh, don't freeze them. I heard some people say freeze. Uh, and just in the fridge is fine. It helps cool that stuff off, keeps it stuck to it. Give it a second coat. Again, second coat is optional, but I enjoy my stuff with a nice thick uh, thing of batter or whatever stuck to the outside of it. Now, this is, although I use all my egg, a little bit of my batter. Uh, get those out of the way. Get you a decent sized fry pan, a wok if you need it, whatever, so they don't stack. And then go ahead and get you some oil you want to put about quarter inch of oil in the bottom of it which is about a cup and a half to two cups depending on the size of your skillet right go ahead and get that started about medium medium high don't want it too high uh, you can just want it to bubble you don't want it to spatter all over the place so uh, it doesn't have to immediately bubble around the edges but that's where you're going to see it go ahead and put these in here now when you do it uh, don't layer them on top of each other unless you get like a deep fryer where you can push them around uh, because they will cook to each other and again you'll end up with one giant plate sized ravioli which in hindsight doesn't sound like a bad idea <laughs> but uh most people you don't want to do that uh even these last two i put up against the edges they'll slide down in there so again they will start bubbling you can see them here now whatever the hell i'm talking about in this scene i don't know what the hell i'm talking about uh we do the voiceover later so i'm just miming this i have no idea what i was talking about in that scene so once these cook for about four to six minutes on one side you can start flipping them over you can see they'll start browning the ones in the middle cook faster, so keep an eye on those. Once you get a nice brown on both sides, go ahead and get your secret weapon, a plate with a paper towel on it, because that's better than a George Foreman grill. Go ahead, and the ones that are nice and brown, usually towards the middle, 
go ahead and put those directly on that paper plate or the uh, paper towel on your plate and then just put the rest of them in. just keep track of what's in there now while these are hot this is completely optional this is something that's doing uh go ahead and if you have some cheese left over i put some asiago or parmesan on them and it'll melt down to them it's an extra flavor again optional not mandatory but it's something that actually turned out good and I just had some extra cheese sitting around. Like, is there any such thing as extra cheese? Whatever. So there you have it, man. Uh, it took me a while because that bag was huge. I could have done this for at least two meals. Uh, this is great for like an hors d'oeuvre thing. This is great for an appetizer or you can just use it as a whole meal. It's not healthy. Uh, don't don't ever misquote me as saying that I'm making healthy food. This is a fried ravioli covered in cheese and then dipped in meat sauce. See, you can just put it on the side, get you a little ramekin or a bowl or something on the side. Boom. You, you can use ranch. You can use any kind of cheese, uh, flavored dipping sauce, like anything. If you try anything different, man, let me know. But yeah, I just use the uh, the pasta sauce, the meat sauce for it. And it's you didn't even have to warm it up. Just straight out of the jar is really good. Uh, even cold would probably be really good. So yeah, try this stuff. Trust me. <laughs> there you have it, folks. That's great as an appetizer. It's great for a full meal. That's what I'm about to eat. Uh, I'm just going to yell over the AC, man. I can't get this turn off, so I apologize for that. So I'll be louder. I'll project a little bit. If you do this differently, you want to see it done differently, man, let us know. Hit us up. You want to come teach me how to make these things by hand instead of getting frozen ones? Feel free. Come on. Put it down in the comments. Let us know. We very much appreciate that. If you can't find us there, or, you know, me or Jack aren't responding, which we generally do. But you can also find us on social media. You can find us at Facebook, Pinterest, and Patreon at Living Between Paychecks Kitchen there. You can also find us at uh, Living Between over on Instagram because we share a lot of pictures and stuff over there. And I'll see you next time, man. I'm going to go eat some of this. It's fried cheese, dude. It's fried pasta and cheese. Hell no. It's awesome.